What is a VLAN and how does it work? You seldom see a network of any size these days that doesn't have connections coming into it from external networks or the internet and servers and wireless networks and any number of devices, all of them interconnected together on that network and or through it or to it. Now, scarily enough, it's not unheard of to have all of these connections and devices on a single broadcast domain on your network. But this type of setup is very highly not recommended. If you do put all devices on the same broadcast domain, you're asking for trouble. You could have traffic issues, you could have multiple collisions, many more collisions than you would have by dividing it up. Collisions that never stop. Most importantly, you'd be putting your entire network at severe risk of security issues for multiple reasons that we get more into detail with on the new to networking course if you get into that. So the question then becomes, what if you had a way of segmenting or dividing that network up using the switch or switches you already have? This is where VLANs come into play. Now, I really quickly want to show you another scenario to help you clarify VLANs just a bit more, because we're going to be using this example in the rest of this short video. Let's say you have an organization or a company with multiple buildings, and the employees in each of those buildings all need to use the same company network. Now, I'm going to show you two of those buildings right here, but pretend these are two of many buildings in this company, or many locations. In this building, here on the right, you have research and development, or a research and development group, and they have their lab and their records, and in this building on the left, you have HR and you have management, primarily. This is primarily where these groups are located. Now, a more realistic scenario like this is you have servers and storage for everyone in the company all in one big data center or, or cool room somewhere else, maybe in another building, where the technicians and the administrators can easily access most all of it and maintain it the way they need to and make sure everything is operating correctly. But for the purposes of this example, we're going to only look at these two buildings and these three groups. Now, if your groups are all separate, you can have a switch for each group in each building and then connect them all, all the switches together with a router and put them on the same network. Theoretically, that's feasible in maybe a smaller group or smaller organization, smaller company. But what if you need to have one person from the management group, say, working in the same building as the research and development group? That might be a need in your company or organization. Since it's just one person, if you didn't have a way to divide their traffic up from everybody else's traffic and everybody was in the same broadcast domain on the network, you'd have to string another network cable from the router here over to the building on the right and put another switch there just for that one person to connect on their own segmented portion of the network. So what if you had someone from HR working in the building on the right? Maybe, you know, would you need to install a switch with another connection back to the router for each person in each group or each subnet or segment of the network just to keep them separate? That can get expensive. It can get tedious and it can start requiring more and more space and equipment every time you put someone from another LAN segment in the same building or the same location. And we don't want someone from research and development having access to the same network resources as, say, the HR person or the management person, so we can't connect them all on the same switch that the research and development group uses, right? Do you see how this can get out of hand? So VLANs come into play for just this specific type of scenario, and they, they come into play for other reasons as well which we'll talk about shortly down the road in other upcoming videos. You can configure multiple VLANs on your network, one for each group, one for HR, one for management, one for the research and development group, and one for any other groups that you have in your company. And those VLANs can't communicate directly with each other on the network or access each other's devices and resources. They are kept separate from each other. And you can configure VLANs within the switch programming on each switch or each networking device. Typically it's on each layer two device. So you can divide a single physical switch into multiple VLANs or Pi pieces, like the analogy I, I like to use a lot. It's like dividing a switch into Pi pieces and determining, okay, these uh, three or four interfaces here on the outside of the switch are going to be for the HR group's VLAN, whatever VLAN we choose. In this example, we'll use VLAN two for HR. So you'll, you'll configure VLAN two for those three or one or two ports or whatever ports you need in VLAN two on the switch. 
So anybody connecting to those ports with their computer or device is going to be assumed to be in VLAN 2. Same for the other groups. Let's say you're using VLAN 3 for your management group in your company. Anybody in the management group will be connected on VLAN 3. So you can divide a switch up into kind of like pie pieces, depending on how you want to do it as the administrator, to determine which ports belong in which VLAN or which network devices connected to that switch belong in which VLAN. This allows you to only use that single switch, a single physical network switch in the same building without having to go out and get another switch or buy another switch or component every time you need another connection or another LAN segment for a different group or a different person in a different group. Every time you have a new person from a different group in the same building or location, you don't need to go buy another switch and then run a cable from it all the way to the next router in line on your network to allow them to have special connectivity on their special segment of the network. VLANs allow you to divide that up inside a single switch. And this becomes extremely beneficial for multiple reasons. Again, you're limiting broadcast traffic, which we'll talk about in other videos when it comes up to that when it comes to broadcasts. You're also limiting uh, security in that you're not allowing somebody from one group to access resources and computers and devices servers in another group unless you specify that that particular user or person has access. Okay, and we're going to get into that later too. If you get into the new to networking course, I'm going to go into some of that in more detail so that it kind of describes that for you. Now a physical port or interface on the switch that is connected to the HR person's computer in this example is configured in the HR VLAN, whatever VLAN number you decide to use for HR. Now in this example I chose to use VLAN 2. I'm the administrator on this so I'm going to use VLAN 2. Maybe that's what you are too. You're the administrator in this group or this company. You chose VLAN 2. We're just going to go with that for this example. The physical port or the interface on the same switch that is connected to the management person's computer is configured in the management VLAN, VLAN 2. And all other ports are configured in the research and development VLAN. And that's until you move in the HR person. When you move in the HR person, you got to take VLAN 3 and configure their port on the switch on the building on the right into VLAN 3 so that they can have connectivity to the HR group's local area network or virtual local area network. That's what you're doing with VLANs. Now, they're all kept separate but they can all still use the same physical switch without having to have a separate switch for each group in the same building. Broadcasts in each VLAN are not seen or dealt with by computers and devices in the other VLANs. By doing so, you have prevented all devices and resources in the same company from all being on the same segment with more traffic and collisions and everyone having access to everything. Not good, highly frowned upon. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. And, and you, as you get more into studying networking, you will completely understand this. Believe me, it may, it may not make sense to you now, but as we go along, it will. Now, you are controlling the traffic, the collisions, the access within each group simply by using separate VLANs for each group. I get into more detail in my new to networking course on this, but each VLAN will be assigned a number. And if you're a visual learner, kind of like I am, 60% of us out here are visual learners. So if you're a visual learner, just to give you a better visual to kind of understand VLANs a little bit better, think of each VLAN not as a number, although that's how you program in them and configure them. You configure them as numbers, VLAN numbers on your network. But don't think of them as numbers, rather think of them as each VLAN is a different color. So you might have a blue VLAN in this example, you might have a green VLAN, you might have a red VLAN, a yellow VLAN, that type of thing. Even if they're not actually using colors, that's the easiest way to keep track of VLANs with a, a visual that you visual learners out here can actually understand. So if the HR VLAN is, say, uh, the blue VLAN, let's say VLAN 2 is going to be the blue VLAN, just for visual reference. You can see here how the HR person in the building on the right can utilize the same network segment, the same virtual LAN or VLAN, to connect to everyone else and all the network resources in the HR group. Now, the same for the other groups. Again, each one has its own separate VLAN. Now, for the purpose of keeping each of these videos as simple as possible, helping you pass the Network Plus certification exam, which is really why we're ultimately here, to get you started right, and hopefully the CCNA and, and maybe even the CCMP as we go along, there are many other facets of VLANs that I can show you and that I want to show you, but for now, I just want to add on trunks, because in this example, we are going to need what is called a trunk connection set up on each of these switches that will pass the traffic from those multiple VLANs 
VLANs across to each other. I want to talk just for a second about that connection between the switches in these two buildings or the network devices in these two buildings. The term used to describe a multiple VLAN connect, uh, configured connection like this is trunk. And it is similar to say putting multiple vines together to make a bigger trunk in nature. You can also think of it as putting multiple fiber optic wires together, which is also known as a trunk or steel cables. When you put multiple smaller steel cables together, you make a bigger, heavier duty cable. That's a, known as a trunk when you're dealing with construction. Multiple VLANs traversing the same network connection, typically between two switches or layer two devices, is called a trunk. What is a VLAN and how does it work? Well, now you know the basics. Be sure to look for upcoming videos where I go more in depth into VLANs and show you dynamic VLANs as well as VTP, which is, stands for Virtual Trunking Protocol.